Uh, hello everyone, welcome to the, well it's not an introduction, a deep dive into Reactive Java. Uh, what we'll do during this presentation, uh, I will show you, uh, I will tell you about a uh, history of this framework and this approach. Uh, I will tell you a few things about APIs, how much it depends on your knowledge, I will ask you how many of you would know this stuff so I don't do it too long and then we we'll dive into code so that uh, we can see not only basics but I hope to cover some more advanced parts of Rx. Uh, why the main picture of the well it's a decades old game of incredible machine and for me it illustrates what's uh, w what is this all about? So here we start with some event that is triggered by one trigger and it propagates throughout the whole the system, uh, triggering other events, everything is moving and going into one uh, direction to finish it and uh, then the state of the machine is frozen. So this is a stream processing, uh, it's similar and uh, I hope you will see that in the end. Uh, a few words about history. Well, uh, being using reactivity or asynchronous processing is nothing new. So there, people have been doing it for decades and for some it might be uh, quite shocking that actually people in the 70s know their stuff and uh, did a lot of systems. Uh, systems like uh, Apollo mission, they had computers that were uh, hundreds, thousands slower than ours and they processed hundreds of uh, trajectory updates a second and they could do it. They of course didn't have to parse JSON for <laughs> in every call but it could do a lot of processing. So w with our current computers we can do it also and uh, large companies, when you look at the conferences so, uh, such as ReactConf or InfoQ, the guys that are doing high frequency trading or any site that are need to be reactive or just responsive and fast under load, they're doing it mostly using event uh, processing. They change every state uh, change in the system into events and they process it so that uh, so this architecture was repeated and repeated by many companies and at some point they said well it was we are doing it all over again and uh, we know that other people's years ago did it similar uh, way so maybe we should do about something about it maybe we should uh, evangelize it so there was this manifesto which is of course uh, not the starting point of this whole movement. It's like more like a peak. Uh, and uh, and why they wanted to uh, everyone to know about it? Well, right now, if the company is successful, it can handle need to handle much more load that uh, than in ten days years earlier. For example, if you have a web page and it's popular, then you, your load can change from day to day 10 or 100 times. And, uh, and the, the problem are users. Of course, they are always the problem because they are more and more demanding. And uh, I'm saying this from the point of view of a backend developer. So for me, stream processing uh, and Rx uh, is more like uh, better processing of streams and futures. So it's asynchronous processing on the backend. Uh, that's why I'm to talking about scale, but this approach is popular not only on backend. It's, it's, uh, uh, people find that uh, it's a very good in processing uh, uh, things like mouse events and uh, for designing uh, fr uh, front-end and GUIs. Uh, at the end of my presentation, I hope we we'll we'll have working prototype of a uh, Twitter UI. It will not be tweeting, but we'll be able to look up uh, people by uh, uh, by tags and uh, display their profile names. And uh, I'm sorry because I'm not the front end guy, so the GUI will be awful. 
and I'm sorry for that, but you see how you can use stream processing to create not only awful GUIs, but also something that works. Uh, all this started, the uh, uh, RX in current incarnation started in at Microsoft. So uh, for people who work with .NET, the it's not th that new for them. Uh, but Microsoft wasn't always popular in every uh, circle and what they're doing now is open sourcing stuff, doing tools for uh, for uh, Linux. It's interesting, maybe they can be called a hipster company now. Not everyone is uh, trusting them, as you can see by this tweet. Uh, and. Uh, uh, so for us Java developers, it started uh, sometime later when uh, Netflix started porting the uh, ideas of Rx and the library to Java. Uh, so before Netflix, there was this guy. He was one of the main inventors, and uh, you can see that his outfit it it, it an inspires confidence, right? If you look at him and uh, I really uh, think that you should uh, view some of uh, Eric's presentations because whether he's talking about Agile, which he doesn't like, or he's talking about uh, category theory, theory, it does. he does a great show and uh, he can really, in this show, uh, include a lot of knowledge and that can be uh, well, I understood some of category theory thanks to him, so it must be very easy, right? For uh, he must be very good. Uh, and when Nef Netflix uh, started uh, porting it, what were the problems? Well, I guess they had a lot of problems with uh, uh, scale, but this is how they uh, a few years ago show it. Uh, let's say we have a UI. You want to sell people movies and uh, uh, TV series and stuff, so you need to display a UI where you can select categories of media content. And if user selects a media content like a movie, you need to uh, show him list of genres, then maybe a list of movies with uh, and the download for each movie download well user ratings, user comments, some uh, cover art and stuff. And uh, if you do it in a synchronous way, there's a lot of overhead in communication between client and server. So this shows like. There's some processing on client, then there's network latency waiting for stuff to be downloaded. And that's synchronous, and of course, uh, Rx is not the only way to fix that. But they started experimenting, and they did something more like that. So you call, you call a backend service with a set of requirements, then you get a stream of incoming results, and also look that it's done on backend the, in the same way. So one service calls another service wanting some data and it, it gets stream. So if I ask about a list of movies, I don't have to wait for every f movie to be collected and all the data to be ready. I can receive the first movie the service got and I can process it and pass along. So it reduces the latency involved in such communication. And so they started using Rx and they started porting it to Java and the basic class of this framework is an observable. So when we uh, want to create a stream, we create some observables. Uh, these are classes that uh, emit the events and we can observe those events. So here's the basic contract of that. Uh, we have a good professor Schrodinger who wants to observe a poor cat in a box and the contract for this framework, for this uh, all sim processing is like that. If we want to, uh, if we have the observable that defines some computation, we want to uh, start receiving actual data from it, we call subscribe. Uh, when we call subscribe, the actual computation starts and we can see we are, uh, we are sent some events. So this is the, the, that part. On next is called uh, zero on more times. So if there are no events, it will not be called. If there are many events, of course, it will, uh, will be called. It may never complete. 
There are events that uh, like uh, mouse pointer moves, right? At in, until application closes, it will never complete. But if it completes, then the uh, thing being observed will notify us by calling on completed. And then we say, okay, that's the end. You will not get any, uh, any more messages or it will call on error, which is also a terminal uh, condition. Uh, it says there was an error, this is the error, and you will not get any no more notifications. And in case we want to stop receiving any more data, uh, we can call unsubscribe. Unsubscribe is best effort. So the observer does not have to, the, ob the um, object being observed does not have to uh, finish immediately, but if it will call, tell you that it's completed, then it will never send you any more messages. And in this implementation, in actually in every RX impl implementations, all this is single threaded. So this means that in the code is that is run inside is single threaded. Although you can emit uh, events in some cases in from many threads, and the framework makes sure that this invariant is uh, preserved. But we see that in uh, with code examples, and. Uh, Let's see how we would implement in plain Java some fragment of code that processes tweets and then we'll try to do similar stuff in uh, in Rx. So this is uh, just some simple processing. Here we just got uh, ask some kind of client to get a next batch of uh, tweets. Then we will loop through this and uh, deserialize it from JSON. Then we will get a profile image and we'll try to download the actual image from the net. And then we will validate if we have all the data for this given tweet to be processed later. And what are the problem with this code? Uh, there's no monitoring at all, there is no back pressure. Back pressure means that if the producer produces too much, then we might not be able to handle it. So if the client produces one million tweets, we might not have enough memory to uh, to hold it in one list and then process it. Uh, so there is no way telling the, the client here, the, this object which produces the tweets to say, back off, I can't handle that. Uh, there are no timeouts here, so if the download hangs, we just hang there and nothing happens. And there is no error handling, so if there is an error downloading, the, this whole code is, we get an exception and it's terminated. There's no parallelism, so we do this serially, one by one. Oh, and logging. So there's no logging. So we try to add all this stuff while developing code. And really, please, if there are any questions, apart from the application that you can use, please do uh, interrupt me and ask questions. Is that uh, large enough? How about now? I, I don't expect you to read the contents of the tweets, right? Now? Okay, <laughs> thanks. So uh, I prepared a few tweets. It's they are in JSON format. It's the format that we get it from Twitter, from the APIs. I cleaned them up a bit, so there's not, uh, this they do don't contain every information. And let's try to process them. Of course, these are prepared, so then we will switch to a real client that will get real life updates. But let's start with, uh, uh, with this example. So the entry point is observable and we need to create this interface. Uh, the actual implementation of observable 
that will emit those tweets. So we have a nice class from, uh, and we will pass it tweets. Unfortunately, uh, that framework doesn't like people presenting, so they removed a nice var args method that was here, and I need to wrap it into a collection. So here we created a an observable that is uh, actually a handle to some kind of a computation, some uh, uh, some list of uh, transformations. Right now there are no transformation that that has a source of data, and the source of data is static. This this list right now, and we can <coughs> compose it with other operators. Uh, and uh, apply some transformations here. Well, sum is not a very good name because uh, it's this is the list. I'm going page by page. I don't remember some of them. I really don't. Uh, if I don't use it for some time, I don't remember the exact meaning of everyone. I tried to download Javadoc for this on my phone while driving here and I maxed out my uh, mobile plan. Uh, so what can we do, do with those tweets? Uh, we would like to receive them in, at the beginning without any pro processing. I said that it's actually a handle to computation because uh, nothing happens. When we create this observable, nothing will happen there will be no action on the producer side or consumer side. We, uh, in order to execute anything, we need to subscribe. So it's, uh, it matches the diagram I, I shown you before. We need to subscribe to the observable. But of course, if we just subscribe, the tweets are emitted, but there's no action taken. So let's see what can we do here. First, uh, we can register uh, callbacks on every event. So there are callbacks for on next, on error, and on complete. Let's start with uh, with uh, some action when the new item item is emitted. Uh, we need to provide implementation of interface action one because R Rx Java mm, well it uh, targets mm, audience that is larger than just Java 8 users, so they don't use Java 8 uh, uh, APIs. So they have their own set of actions, which is uh, similar to uh, to consumer in Java 8, and they have uh, classes like func1, func2, which are like function and by function. Uh, it, uh, it, it says the number, he says how, how many arguments it, uh, it uh, accepts. So this we s we're starting with subscription to it. Let's print it out. Fortunately, um, IntelliJ can change it into Lambda. And let's try it. Okay, so here we got all the tweets and we printed them. What else can we do? Well, as you can see, there not all of these are tweets. There is something called delete. It's just a part of the, the their API. They say that some uh, some tweet was deleted and we cannot handle it. So let's filter it out. We're using filter right now. Uh, as you can guess, it accepts a function that will take the stream the object that we are streaming and we decide if should we filter it out or not and we return boolean so let's say that we want a json that contains is it try again and of course it contains okay thanks Okay, so we get a list of tweets without uh, without um, a delete one, but 
to do anything more interesting, we should change it into objects. So we can use do this with map, which will uh, which will change the type of the stream we have. So it needs a function accepting string, and it will turn turn uh, a tweet object here. In order to deserialize, I'm using JSON, something like okay. It can take this uh, JSON and change it from as if by magic from JSON to an object. And somehow idea stopped trying to give me lambda here. So I need to do it myself. Okay, let's try that. Hmm, it didn't exactly work. So, what's the problem? We have an exception that say that is saying that there was an error while a meeting on next. So it was emitting a new element, and somehow some of the operators thrown has thrown an exception. Actually, we can see here the actual value that uh, that was passed when the exception was thrown and we can check out in the stack trace where was it thrown so it was in map and here the exception that actually we get in the thread main says that there was no on error implemented so that was for the framework that is the problem there is no on error implemented because error happening inside uh, those uh, um, our transformations is something normal. It knows that there they can happen. The problem is that we need to be able to handle it. So in subscription, we need to provide uh, another action that will consume throwable. So let's do it uh, with method handles and do this. Okay, we'll be printing stack trace. So here, here we have actually actual handle, handler for any errors, and it says that it was problem with deserializing JSON. Fa fa uh, fortunately, uh, I know where because I did it. There's a missing brace here. Okay, so here we have. Uh, tweets that are deserialized and to string uh, uh, method of tweet we just print who set the location actually every tweet contains the location uh, when it was uh, tweeted and uh, uh, contents of the tweet So, um, before we go to a really streaming version, we can we can here apply any other uh, operator. I, I want to apply a filter that uh, so we'll have the same code that like an imperative version. So it will only pass a valid tweet that has a location specified so we ha we are ending up with only three tweets in the end okay so uh, if anyone of you wants to ha look at it this code for more for a longer time it's all on github and it's annotated so for every example i'm doing here there is an um completed example on github with some annotations so you can uh, check out uh, how it should work and for this one we will try one more uh, one more exercise what if you are writing the server side of it so you're writing the method that produces the tweets and you want to uh, push it through the observable stream so it's also 
easy to do, but it's I need some more code. So we're creating a, an observable. So actually, this is the server side. Uh, when client asks us for uh, to do some operation and return observable, we create a new one and provide some code that will push the data there. And the important difference here is that usually we would uh, do something like uh, like that. You have a service and it either returns all the data or maybe it will return the future. So you call the data give me tweets, uh, you call the service give me tweets and it will start processing. It will start uh, generating the tweets and will return either a list or maybe a future if someone, uh, if it's not immediate. With observable, you return an observable which just is a handle to a computation usually you wouldn't start anything in this method. In th this method creates uh, an observable with a code that is executed when someone subscribes. So you return this computation wrapped into an observable and if someone actually subscribes to it, then this code will be executed. So usually you wouldn't start the processing uh, immediately. You would wait for some subscription and here the code we need to provide in order to create the observable is a callback that happens on subscribe. So if someone subscribes to it, this is the code that will be executed. So instead of calling this observable for, from, let's uh, emit the tweets ourselves. So we have a handle here to a subscriber. So this is the, uh, the object or the code that is on the other side and called the, uh, the subscribe. Uh, basic operation we can do here is call on completed or on error and on next. We can, it's all right to call on completed right away if there is no data and there will never be an or on error if we are in a state that is not, for example, there was no call to start, so we can't uh, emit anything. It's like in illegal thread exception. We can call on error right away, but we will be nice and we'll try to push the tweets here. So we're pushing the tweets and instead of doing this observable, okay, so we push the tweets and that's it. We, uh, um, it works that way, but there's a lot of, a lot more to it. There are two problems here. What if someone unsubscribe? Of course, unsubscription is best effort, so we can ignore it and push the data down the stream. But it would be nice to uh, to verify that uh, actually someone is still listening. So we can do it by calling subscriber is unsubscribed. And actually, if we emit it in a loop, we would call it maybe every time before emission, sometimes maybe before uh, each batch of emissions is not always uh, efficient to call it uh, f before every one emission. Uh, but this code, code is very important if we need any way to close the stream from the client side. There's also other thing. When uh, observable call subscribe, well, the code is uh, the main thread, the thread that does it, it will call subscribe. Inside the framework, it will call delegate to filter subscribe, map, filter, and it will go up the chain until this code is executed. So this is a callback to be executed when someone subscribes and it is executed by the thread that calls subscribe. So right now, the thread is busy emitting. It subscribed and it is sending data to itself in, in a way. And uh, usually it's not what we want. You would either do something like that here. That's of course a crude demo-like way. So we would create a new thread.
And this way, we call subscribe. This code is executed, so we execute a code that starts a new thread, and it will emit uh, events. Uh, and the main thread, after that, it will just exit. So uh, if this thread would be a daemon thread, the whole application would exit and we wouldn't see anything. So uh, we would have to just wait for the emission to happen. Okay, there's an error because that's the way to check if someone is unsubscribed. We have three tweets. Uh, that's just to illustrate how we should, uh, how w what are the problems with this. But we can, we don't have to start a new thread manually. For example, we can do something like that, and you can do it on the uh, server side. When you create a new computation wrapped inside observable, you can return not the original observable, but the one saying subscribe on and then you put a thread pool that uh, should execute the subscription. Actually, the interface is called uh, scheduler. So you can ra uh, uh, wrap um, an executor into a scheduler pass there, or you can use some of the um, schedulers that are started uh, when the framework starts. So immediate scheduler is just something that we execute on a calling thread. And uh, computation scheduler is one that starts as many threads as there are cores. So actually when you do something that is computation heavy, you can use all the cores. IO scheduler, well, I, I'm not sure in this version this changes from time to time, but usually it was uh, something like an unbounded scheduler that uh, uh, that just r starts a new thread for like an for IO op operation. On the other hand, there is a counterpart to this that says uh, observe on. So here it would look like we actually execute with a main thread subscribe, then we go into this code and we emit stuff. But the, when we emit stuff, it, put, it is put on an internal queue and the threads from the, this scheduler here will be pushing data through this pipeline. So I guess this is this can be quite uh, a lot. I hope this is uh, uh, clear. Questions? Um, please ask me some question. Everything's clear? Okay. I know you're lying. Uh, so that's the end of uh, first basic example. Let's start with streaming. So here we have a part that was already uh, implemented before. We're filtering, we're mapping from JSON, but we need, uh, here I created an empty observable, so it will not emit an, an, uh, um, uh, any events. We need something to uh, connect to Twitter and uh, get the tweets. There is an API that uh, allows us to connect to Twitter and we'll get, well, I'm not sure what it is. It's a, a stream of tweets. I don't know if it's all the tweets that are there real time or it's just filtered or some examples. But it's a lot. So if, if you think that uh, Maven downloads the whole internet, then wait and see. Uh, okay, we have operation that called tweets. It gives, gives us a stream of tweets. Uh, because it's a closable, then we should do it properly. Uh, and let's subscribe to it. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, I guess only Chuck Norris can print from input stream. 
Uh, I checked that internal connection is uh, right. Okay, I know what I'm missing, actually. We need to wait. Okay. Okay, so we're getting the stuff. And this is supports Unicode. Right? If I wait long enough, there are always some ASCII art there, somewhere. Okay, so we're getting this uh, very interesting stream of thoughts in many languages. And let's try to do something about it. Well, what are, what can, what problems can we have with that? Maybe it's too much of that. So let's try, there must be an operator for it, right? So we can, for example, throttle. Uh, there are two operations, throttle first and throttle last. Uh, basic difference is that uh, one operator will just pa pu uh, will pass the event and where for a timeout to happen before it will push any other event and the other operator will do the other way around. So it will first wait for some time and then push an event and then again wait some time. So let's <coughs> let's throttle this. Well, I guess it, it's uh, something like that. Okay. Let's say we will throttle it and we only want data every 200 milliseconds. Um, that's not the code. Okay, so we get uh, data every 200 milliseconds instead of all. So the other data is dropped, but we have we can apply different strategies on what happens actually when there is no uh, um, when there's no capacity on our side, the producer produces too much, and it's well, it's basically related uh, in why one way to one or another to back pressure. Uh, what other things can happen? There can be uh, error. So if there is an I/O error on the streaming client side, so uh, it will emit an error notification, and uh, there are several things we can do with that. F one thing is we want to retry the operation. And I remember that when I said that on error finishes the whole computation, the stream is thrown away. And uh, so we cannot just ignore the error. When the error is emitted, uh, every operator on the way is notified about the error. So they clean up after themselves. They clean up their state. So we cannot at some point say ignore error we're waiting for more because more will never come and we cannot uh, there was some operator doing it at some point but it was a hack and they fu fortunately removed it but we have other things retry just does subscribe again the operators here never get the error but the operators here will get a call to subscribe and they will call the tweets again to restart the operation I tried to do this by uh, shutting down uh, Wi-Fi, but on Mac it's like it can take a few minutes before it's notified. So it's not uh, practical during the demo to show you the actual error. But uh, with retry, it can indefinitely subscribe again to the stream. We can specify how many times we want to uh, retry, or we can pass in a fact function that will get the retry number and the exception that was uh, thrown. So we can decide ourselves if we want to retry or just pass the error down the stream. There are other means uh, to deal with errors and we can do something like that. On error, resume next. This means that if there was an error, here we can provide another stream. So we can have, uh, for example, a cache we can uh, cache some elements and say, okay, if we can get the live data, let's send some fake data down the stream. So we can provide an uh, observable here of our
of our tweets that we previously defined and when error happens we just will get be getting this uh, uh, this cached or fake data we can all also on er call on error return which means that okay there was an error we're finishing uh, stuff up but we will send out one final uh, one final tweet or one final object in the stream saying that this is end of stream some something that maybe summarizes the stream and uh, and then we call uh, uh, on completed to the rest of the operators okay, let's see the completed version if there are any things that i would uh, forget no, fortunately not there are other oper Uh, yes, but it depends on uh, on exact stream. I guess I would pu would put retry somewhere or here, right? Or maybe provide tweets with an argument of how many times to retry, and the server side would return observable with retry applied already. But uh, you're right that profile should be here. But also uh, we need to remember that here is a JSON parsing. There might be some error in with given with given um, uh, JSON for one tweet. So maybe we could want to retry also here. Yeah. Right. Uh, there are there are two types of stream types of stream. One type of stream is like Twitter's when we, we always get new data, so we, we can retry and uh, hope for to get a formatted tweet. But if we uh, get a pre-computed list of tweets, then we will always fail, right? So we one way is to just create a normal hum error handling count in the uh, in the operator, so we don't throw any exception. And like I said, when the exception is already thrown, we uh, we cannot uh, ignore it. We cannot. Uh, we must finish the whole stream, unfortunately. So if we decide to throw this exception here, we can provide fallback on retry or retry, but we cannot ignore it. Probably, if we ignore, if we try to make some kind of code that ignores it right away after this map, maybe this would work because no one else would see this but it's fishy uh, let's try something else with this stream and let's try to count the uh, number of words that happening some histogram of a uh, out of a few a few tweets or maybe a few thousand tweets and this is so that i can show you another pow powerful operator is called flood map if someone is familiar with uh, uh, with um, uh, functional programming it's um, it's from uh, it's a modern nadic operator and it's very important so uh, in the world of rx because it allows you to apply any operation any function that returns an as another stream and you you just concatenate all those streams so i'll show you that we are we are already getting all these tweets i try to retry here and flat map definition is that it takes a function this function will get another element in a stream but it will return an a, a stream here so uh, because it has a map in the name we can change the type of this uh, whole stream and we can do this let's say uh, well maybe first let's map the tweet to its contents so that we are operating on strings like that and here we will return since we want to convert every text into a list of words we need to do, do well this is string here now let's Let's split it by space and return it. Like that. So 
this is this is a pre-computed okay uh, it's a pre-computed actually uh, data because every event contains this data already we see then how we can do uh, this asynchronously but here we just split it by the words and it's uh, every tweet is uh, generates a stream of words and it's uh, it's uh, inserted into our main stream. So if we do run it, then we uh, we get the stream of words, and they have the same order as the tweets are that are coming here. It's not because there's some guarantee about that. It's just because we convert every mm, tweet into a uh, data that is readily available. Uh, and there's there's one more operator that uh, is quite complicated, and uh, I hope that I will be able to to explain it correctly. A group by group by operator is uh, something that creates a new uh, new stream every time there is a new queue, key. So if we are we want to uh, count every word, so we will group by the word and we'll get streams that contain the same word. If I, in group by, I do something like this. So for every string, we just, I just return it, and this will be the key in group by. This works like that. Let's say we let's say this is the pipe like from incredible machine and we have elements flowing here like this is element this is an element all are of the same type but they the, they are different like that and the group by operator we look at the element and say okay that's a star we there is no uh, star pipe f there is no pipe to push the star inside because we are grouping by the type. So we are creating a new pipe. Let's do it like that. And in this pipe, we'll have all the stars flowing. Here. So there will be every star that is emitted will go to this pipe. Then we have another type uh, another uh, another uh, key, so we create another pipe and another pipe. This means that actually group by operator we change. Um, let's convert it to a local variable and see what is the type. The type of this observable is stream of streams. So what we get here is actually a streams of those pipes. Every time there is new word, there will be a new pipe created just for this key, for this word. And here we have an event saying, here, a new stream. One stream and uh, one stream for every word. So uh, time is running out, so you, you uh, can believe me <laughs> just that we can, it works. And we can uh, call on this group by, if we call subscribe, we printing the streams. So we will print that actually there was an event, new event, which is new stream. But if we want to do something useful, we can, for example, map it to something, something which is actually useful. So this map operator, we get the, the new stream. And what do we want to do with this stream? Well, we can, for example, uh, we can ca uh, call count on it. So this operator will not finish until uh, the stream is completely finished and it will uh, say how many events were there. So that's a very uh, complicated way of calculating how many, how many words were there of each type. And uh, you might notice that actually this stream never ends. So it's not exactly practical, but we can do something like that. We can say take ta thousand, and we'll only take 
1000 elements and af after the element number 1000 we unsubscribe automatically we can also do something like skip and we want we need we might want to skip the ten fir first 10 elements Uh, excuse me, can you repeat? Yeah. Mm, so, uh, let's quickly look at the... Okay, I need to delete it, unfortunately. Let's look at the... Twitter client and let's see how how it is implemented. The Twitter client is something uh, from the server side. So this is more like what I showed you when we j we pushed tweets through the uh, observable. And this code, well, I'm using uh, async HTTP client, but all kind of HTTP clients will be the same in a way that we will prepare some get operation to be executed on this uh, on this sample um, service which will produce the data and we need to provide a callback it's all uh, if we're doing using asynchronous calls then we provide the callback uh, and this callback will be infor uh, informing us about well in this case it will inform us that there was an exception in uh, handling uh, HTTP. There was new body part received. There was some status received, headers, and so on. So what ki uh, whatever kind of kind you use, it will be the same. And if we want to uh, create uh, a s observable stream out of that, this is the implementation here. I'm only interested in body part received. The state we return is information if we want to continue. If not, then the HTTP client will just finish the uh, processing and close the uh, close the uh, input stream. And uh, here, I just extract a byte buffer with the data. If the client is not unsubscribed, we will process this, this buffer and uh, find some boundaries between tweets and put it and emit them here. And if we didn't find a boundary, then mean it means that in this buffer we have like half a tweet and it's put into uh, a builder, so a string builder, so we can process it next time we get any packet from the internet. Uh, that's the way we we implement the server side that is pushing the all the data we've seen. Mm, and the UI client uses all this stuff so that so that we can implement something like this and what it does when i write something i i don't know if you can see this but the number of the of uh, uh, letters I can post goes down. That's the one feature. And another feature which uses more asynchronous uh, processing is when I type uh, this, then there will be a new window uh, displayed. And here we call a Twitter service to get the list of users that match this, uh, this part of uh, uh, this part of the string and here uh, then we try to uh, download pictures and uh, what other operators we need to use to implement it let's go quickly through that Okay, so that's the UI code. I guess it's always if it's Swing or JavaFX or whatever, this uh, is the same. What's in is interesting it is that we can with some uh, with some uh, 
helper classes convert any UI event into a uh, stream. And this is an example of the text that is contained in the box that was I was writing. I converted with some helper to a stream of uh, modifications and I map it into uh, to the number of um, of letters that we are left. Mm, sure, sorry. So for every text value, I get the length and just compute how many characters we we are left. Do on next is just uh, an operation that we inject in the uh, stream. It doesn't change the stream, but we can do something else. And here we just setting the text of the characters. And what uh, is missing when I showed you, finally, we based on the number of characters that are left, we just change the color of the text. That's that's very uh, very simple. And when uh, here the map changes the numbers, the characters into the um, color, and we subscribe by uh, this method set text fill. So it just gets the final color there. There are other things when I display the list. I need it to go away at some point and I press escape key. Actually, I don't know this framework well, so I don't know if the es escape key is passed to the uh, main window, to the text window or whatever. So I have this, I create the main panel and the list view observables, all the streams there, and I just merge the streams. This operator will uh, give me a stream that merges those two streams and now I don't care if the escape was called on uh, any of those uh, those uh, components because I know the the action will be the same I filter this by the key code I need only escape and subscribe it any anytime I get this event I will just close the uh, close the um, list uh, Extracting the um, list of users and uh, is a little more complicated. Here we have an observable uh, uh, that shows me the current position. Ca every time I move the current in the uh, window, whether I'm writing or I'm just uh, screwing through it, I will get the number that defines where it is. I map it into ordinal integer. I filter the position zero but because there cannot be any mention. I need a 80 sign first. Then I have some class that will uh, get the position, get the text and find and walk uh, uh, through the text and find the word I'm right in. And if it starts with, uh, with uh, 80 sign, then we can try to get the, the users from here. This is what's interesting is that we have an operator distinct until, until change. This means that please don't, uh, uh, don't post any new events if it's the same. So if I move the caret in the same word, the, this word will be emitted in the stream here. And this operator says that as long as it's the same word, I don't want it. So this operator is usually used in the UI where, for example, there are some maybe mouse move events or something. And if we uh, have uh, the same position or something like that, I don't, not, don't want to be notified ab uh, about it. I also throttle it because if someone moves the cursor very fast, I don't want to get a notification and try call Twitter every time someone moves through the world. When I move the um, card very fast, I will not get this, this notification because I throttle them. Then I flood map the um, uh, stream of users from Twitter. So here, uh, here I actually call the se remote service and it will return me another stream of users and it will be injected in this stream. It's different uh, than previously when we flab mapped data that we already have because uh, their data we already have, they were just injected in the stream. Here, any time the server or this, uh, or this Twitter client finds a new user to be emitted, it will emit and it will inject it into this whole stream. So there is no order preserved because 
things happen when they happen. So there is a stream of words, there is a stream of users, they are merged and in the uh, order that they just come. And there's some some more to it. Uh, I invite you to Twitter to uh, to GitHub to check it out. Thank you.